Lee, we've had the privilege of joining you in Mönchengladbach and also Bielefeld plants, but we're here in Chemnitz. You make the Hecate machines here, but give us a little bit more about the history of the company. Well, it's an interesting company, Mark, because we started with bicycles imported from the UK and then built machines to start building the bicycles. They've built textile machinery here. They even built cars here. In fact, Vondera is one of the four circles of the Audi um, the Audi logo, and that's from this, uh, this facility here where we still make machines today. And what's the capacity? Well, we can build about 150 machines here, ranging from 400 pallet to about 2 metre pallet. Well, we talk a lot about the actual plant. Let's go and have a look. Lee, we've spoken about uh, Hecker, we've spoken about the history of the Chemnitz factory. However, you brought us into the large build hall. Now, can you explain to us exactly what machines are actually made here but, and the technology behind it? Yeah, of course. This is one of the, 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 the halls we use for the larger range, which uh, to us means pallet sizes of, uh, of 1 metre, 1250, 1600 and 1800. And, and the type of machines that you're actually building here are? They're all horizontal configuration, um, usually with a twin pallet outside the machine, but that configuration can be two, three or four pallets. Uh, a moving column in Z, a table group moves across in X on a T-shaped bed, and then a choice of different spindles. So it's very high tech in here because I can feel that the temperature is obviously controlled has to be controlled, so we, we control to, to plus or minus a degree in here. If you can imagine a, a variance in, in temperature means a, a difference in the thermal expansion of the machines and we've got to build these machines to, to very, very tight uh, tolerances. Within a full axis stroke on a machine of this size, we, we achieve within six microns. And the type of machines that you're building in here, are, are they going into any specific sectors in the market? The cross sector, so we, we do a lot of work in, in, um, in the machine building industry itself, could be oil and gas, could be uh, large energy parts, could even be aerospace parts. So this is just one type of machine that you're building here, I think we're going to look at the mid-size and the smaller range of the machines next, yeah? We will and, and you'll, you'll see a trend, so there's, there's, there's a large flexibility within the ranges that we build. And what you can see in here is a lot of choice on pallets, a lot of choice on spindles, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, five axis spindles, a massive range of, of tool storage systems, and then um, different options in terms of the size of the Y axis, the X axis, the Z axis strokes, all to suit the specific requirements of the customer. Lee, this is the mid-size machines. Typically this is a DBF machine, but what other range in the mid-size have you got? Well, this, this is a, a big seller for us, this range. and We've got uh, machines with a 500, a 630, and an 800 size table with either a B-axis, 4-axis machine, or, or a very, very heavy-duty, strong trunnion option to give you a, a fifth axis, either simultaneous or positioning of very heavy-duty components, again, very accurately. So V-blocks, for example, is a, is a good market for us with this product. And I noticed down the build line here, there's very different options of spindles. We're quite unique. Uh, we can put um, a traversing spindle or a quill in this, which is a fairly small machine for that kind of option. So for, for pump houses, you can use short tools and get right inside the job and take a heavy duty cut with a spindle. There's horizontal, vertical, hearth, mechanical, clamped spindles. There's full five axis uh, heads. Uh, and then there's a choice of uh, motor spindles and, uh, and gear spindles with different rev ranges and different power torque configurations. It's a very versatile. So when you look at the type of the machines that are built here, they're obviously very rigid again. Is it cutting harder metals? It's, it's a choice really. We, we use these machines for light alloy machining in aluminium where we've got 30,000 rev continuous or we use them for cutting Inconel, nickel alloys in, in the oil and gas market or the aerospace market, cast iron parts, steel parts. We've got a solution and configuration for everything on these machines. And out of the range of machines that you do produce at Hecker, why are these the better sellers? I think because they're so robust and heavy duty. They're, they're a cast iron base, they're all thermosymmetrical, um, very, very good swarf evacuation, very good options in terms of the choice of spindles and the number of tools that you can hold from 40 tools up to 450 tool options in, in the carousel. And, and they're a single lift machine. 
the, the, the X and Y and Z axis tends to be slightly bigger than our competitors when you look at the machine size in the range as well. It's vital that all components in your machines are working to the best ability, but what do you do in this hall? Well, this is the sub-assembly hall, Mark. So we start with individual components. A very important part of what we do is we scrape all mating surfaces that either a bearing fits to or a linear, linear rail fits to. And that enables us to achieve the very high accuracies on the machines. And then from there, we build up the sub-assembly. So we fit all the hydraulic parts, the pneumatic parts, with the sub-assemblies. We build the, um, the tool storage system. So behind us, we've got the tower storage system. Of course, we have chain storage systems as well, the spindle housings and the pallet changes. And then what we do at the other end of the shop, we test. So all of these sub-assemblies are then tested 24 hours a day for several days before they then go into the main assembly halls to be fitted into the carcasses of the machines. So by having this facility here, does it give you the flexibility and the control over what's going into your machines? It does, and it enables the schedulers to then make sure that each sub-assembly is ready for the fitters in, in the next bays so that the whole uh, assembly process runs smoothly. At Chemnitz, Heckert, you're producing fantastic machines for the world market. However, you're actually using your own machines to make parts for your customers' machines. Now, we're in your inspection and metrology area, but the investment on this CMM, for example, why is it so crucial? Well, it's crucial for two reasons, Mark. As you said, we use our own machines to manufacture parts for our machines. So we've got Heckert machines here, we've got SIP machines here. So we have, to ma we have to manufacture them and then measure them to make sure that they um, conform to the accuracies required, which for a machine tool are very high. But we also do a lot of turnkey work for our customers. So if we're delivering a machine with a machined solution that has to conform, we have to be able to measure those components. Some of those components can be very large, as you, as you see before you now. So you're looking at this part here. It's obviously a bed for one of the uh, mid-sized machines, I, I would suggest. But what, what uh, is so important about the repeatability factor of measurement and inspection for your machines? Well, first thing we need to do before we build a machine is we need to measure all of the key components and make sure they're correct before we start to assemble. So it's very important that every part that comes in goes through this system first. Then we start to, to do the final scraping, and then we start to build the... Uh, the slideways and the measurement systems onto the beds and, and construct the machine. And when you look at the uh, metrology uh, machines, the CMMs you've got here, I mean, uh, as I say, you, you've got a big bed here, for instance. It gives you the capacity, I suppose, to actually sort of measure bigger parts, doesn't it? Well, it does, because we could be manufacturing large components for our customers in the same way that we're buying in or manufacturing large components for ourselves. So we need the capacity. You know, we've got some small CMMs, we've got some large CMMs. It depends on the on the component that we want to measure. And when you look at the type of builds of your machine, Lee, I'm suggesting that when you start the foundations, it's with the bed, as we see here with this mid-range bed. Well, it depends on the size of the machine. For this machine here, we can install this onto a flat floor. But when, when you go to the larger machines, you then start to require a special foundation, in some cases sculptured foundations. So we build a big swimming pool and then we start upwards. I mean, the machine that you've seen at the nuclear AMRC, for example, has a nearly a five metre deep foundation. And when you're talking about the investment in this uh, inspection room here, it's really the investment for your customers' needs at the end of the day, isn't it? Well, it is, and, and a customer's not going to just take a component off us and believe that it's correct. We have to deliver a CMM report to demonstrate that we're, we're conforming to the tolerances that they've uh, stipulated. We're looking at the uh, end of the build line uh, at Chemnitz at Hecker. Now, these are the, your small range machines. Now, what do you have here? We it's a great observation that we've got a we've got a hall here specifically built for for what we call our 400 500 range of machines you've got a, an l an h and an x variant the x being a fifth axis trunnion the other two being four axis single or or, or twin pallet and we've really gone for the marketplace here with a very very aggressive investment policy so the price of these machines is good and the the, the idea of the new uh, build line means we can deliver these machines in as short as three months, which is a real step change for us. And are you putting a, a are you streamlining the process here? I understand as well. Well, exactly that, and we, we've not lost any of the 
flexibility within the range. The options are still the same. There's a wide range of spindles. There's a wide range of, of tool capacity. We're covering different markets. We're just building them in a, in a far more efficient way. So what you're saying is that, that the base is basically the same on, on these models and then obviously you go from there. Yeah, we build them up for, for, for the market. If you wanted a 30,000 rev, very high speed machine, 80 meters uh, traversing rates for, uh, for aluminium parts for aerospace, we can do that and that's unique. But likewise, if you want a HSK 100 spindle in a very small machine at the other end of the spectrum, we also do that and that's unique to us as well. It's a great invention from Hecate to do this, but you're going into a really competitive market. What makes these machines better? Like I say, they're very well priced. If you look at what you get from the machines and then you compare them to other sort of more mainstream names in the market, you're getting better value for money. Now, we've looked at the large machines, which are quite bespoke. We've looked at the mid-size, which are quite bespoke as well, with lots of different options on, for instance. You've got the smaller machines here. We've got a number of videos that we're producing for Hecate. But for those engineers that would not know Starag or the Hecate machines, what would be your message to them? Well, I'd say anybody looking for a high-end machine, single or twin pallets, into a standalone or FMS system with multiple machines, Give us a call because we're, you know, we're not a mainstream name that people would think of, but these machines are very, very competitive, high-end, accurate and, and, and good performers. And if they can't see machines in the UK, can, the, can they come to the factories? They can always come to the factory and, and we, we always welcome visitors to the factory, but you can also see machines in the UK as well.